question of the day for me is, where is the Premier and where is Minister Fullerton? Uh, you know, they, they're missing in action. Healthcare workers account for nearly 7% of COVID-19 cases in Ontario. But sadly, there have also been some deaths amongst these workers who since the beginning of the pandemic have been hailed heroes. But one union says their frontline staff haven't been treated as such. They are fearful every day that they go into work. Ten months later, they're also totally exhausted and burnt out. To date, over 14,000 healthcare workers in Ontario have contracted the virus. Sadly, some did not survive. The Nurses Union's In Memoriam website is dedicated to some of the 27 workers who've died across Canada. These are some of the ones we lost in Ontario, 13 in all. The majority are people of colour and women. They are some of the worst paid workers in the healthcare system. A lot of them are exploited due to the fact that they are, uh, a lot of them are immigrants to Canada. A lot of them don't speak English. The union representing over 22,000 workers in long-term care homes says they need more protections. The situation inside of these nursing homes has gotten worse. As the province currently has 451 outbreaks at care settings, a little over half are at LTCs. Thank you so much for what you do. But even prior to COVID, deep concerning problems had surfaced. Issues like staffing and PPE shortages, pay equity, which have forced some of these people who we've depended on during the COVID crisis to work multiple jobs just to make ends meet. Look at the uh, population of who depends on this service, and those are our seniors. It's also sexism because the majority of these workers are women. And there is also a strong concern about racism in there as well, because predominantly the workers in this sector are workers of colour. The Ministry of Long-Term Care says it's supporting workers in these homes by investing $461 million, including a wage increase of $3 an hour. But the union says their workers have not received that increase approved months ago. And with Ontario's vaccine rollout underway, the union is also flagging barriers that they say the government has ignored, calling on them to develop a plan. It might take them six hours out of their day to do public transportation to get there, to get the inoculation and get back home. They need to have every bit of barrier removed for them to get this vaccine. Now, we did reach out to the Ministry of Health to ask questions about the vaccine or rollout and if the government plans to address some of the concerns expressed by the union. The ministry told us they would not be able to meet our deadline today. In Toronto, I'm Faiz Amin for City News.